Hi, my name is Arne Galpin. I'm the Vice President of Engineering for Spanco Cranes and Rigid Lifelines Fall Protection. Today we're going to be talking about torque limiters. Torque limiters are used for jib cranes and uh, fold away uh, monorails for fall protection. So, generally when there's an issue with power transmission, it's the torque limiter is slipping. Uh, the, the great thing is it's a super simple fix. So let's get right into it. First thing we want to do is we want to identify the parts. Here we have a sprocket. Here we have a torque limiter. And we want to make sure that we open up the box and identify all the components because there might be something hiding underneath. In this particular case, it's a bushing for the sprocket. So this particular unit uses two springs. There's going to be two components. There's going to be the torque limiter and the instructions. I would strongly recommend you read the instructions from front to back. There's a lot of good information here and uh, we're going to cover some very, uh, very brief points today uh, regarding the torque limiter. So, very briefly how this works. As we have here is just one spring. This spring is made out of hardened steel and it'll compress but it will always spring back. In this particular case we're going to use two springs. Here we have a retention plate that has the keys on it. We have a friction disc and just to show you how this works without going to full assembly the sprocket goes in here and the friction discs go in here and this whole unit can turn without the sprocket turning. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean things thoroughly. Now you can use two uh, solvents if you want. Uh, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. I like this stuff. It's easy to work with. Uh, it doesn't smell that bad. You can also use brake clean. Your choice. <sighs> to do it uh, perfectly, because we do have friction discs, they are a coarse substance. Um, I prefer just to pour a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a bucket. Five gallon bucket, real simple. So we're going to let these soak just in case somebody got their fingers on that or um, you have to keep in mind there's a lot of oil and grease on the chains and especially these these are machine services and this entire unit will come with a little bit of oil on it. So we want to make sure that just in case there's some contamination of the friction discs, we're just going to let these soak in here for a little bit. Then what we want to do is we want to take two clean towels. Clean the surfaces. on both sides. Clean these surfaces on both sides. Now, when we reassemble these, it's very important that your fingers are free of grease. So, we can use gloves, or we can just handle things with our fingertips right from the side. So these are very clean. I'm just going to use my fingertips from the side. Dry these off.
Okay, so while these are drying, I just want to point out some things with this sprocket. This sprocket is matched. The sprocket is matched to the torque limiter. And you can see there's, there's machining marks in that. The surface should be a 65R or 62RA. The, um, it could, up to a 32R or a 32RA. So the surface has to have machining, uh, machining marks on it in order for this to, to grip the friction plate. Um, if, it's, if it's a mere finish, it's too smooth, then we can rough it up with 100 grit sandpaper. Take this, rough up the surface, all set. So, we're gonna start the reassembly. Fingertips on it, or rubber gloves. So we have the pressure plate, we have a friction disc, we have the sprocket. We have a bushing, the bushing has a key that goes in these slots. Another friction disc, another pressure plate. Retention nut, and generally you want to turn these backwards until it clips in. So this is super simple, very, very simple. All we have to do is just hand tight it, hand tension it, and right now we're going to notice that these are very specific length bolts with a machined surface on the top with a very defined thickness. So this is longer than that. It's going to push those springs down and clamp this whole thing together. You want to tension these up just a little bit. So that is not good. That bottom of that head has to be touching the surface. Okay, that's touching the surface, which is good. Here's your air gap. And that compresses these springs so they're flat. Very last thing is this set screw right here. Tighten that down so it's touching. This just keeps this from backing off. Now, this torque limiter is either going to go on the output shaft of a gearbox for a 100 series, or it could be assembled to a torque limiter mounting weldment for 300s and 301s. So that's what this looks like. Pretty straightforward. Key goes in the keyway. There's a set screw down here that you, you tighten up. That locks this thing uh, axially on the shaft. So. That is it. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are here to assist you uh, in any type of issue there is with your power transmission. Like I said before, generally it's the torque limiter and generally it's because it's been contaminated with oil or grease and cleaning and proper resetting. Make sure these bolts are tight down all the way. That should get you where you want to be.